Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, and I'm here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are so happy to be here today. We are going to be talking sister wives with you. We are also going to be wrapping up the season of 90 Day Fiance. We have some things to say about that. Mm -hmm. We also have some gossip around 90 Day Fiance, which we're going to get, and some gossip around sister wives. So there's a lot to get into. Yeah. Before we do that, we just have to issue you a disclaimer, of course. Please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We have dumb opinions. We say what we think. We do not censor ourselves. And so if you're so you might want to find you another dumpster, but if you're down and if you're ready to party, mm. this is the dumpster for you. And if you are down and ready to party, go follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We're covering a lot of bonus shit up mm-hmm. on there. A thousand pound sisters, mm-hmm. my 600 pound live, yep. John and eight plus Kate. You just got to go there to find out. Yeah, it's all there waiting for you. And if you are watching on YouTube, first of all, hi, how are you doing? Thanks for being here. And if you would be so kind, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe. Every little thing you do helps us in the algorithm and it helps us to grow. Thank you. Now, as I understand it, we huh. do have a couple of admin items that we need to get to because we are onboarding a new show. Yeah. Again, 90 Day Fiance is concluding. Thank Finally. You, Jesus. God. God, thank you, Lord and Savior <laughs> Jesus. It's 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 over finally. Yeah. So we were looking for other shows that we thought would be interesting to us and maybe you. I know we put out the Clarion Call and a lot of y'all said Seeking Sister Wives. Yeah, which I'm excited about because you haven't yeah. really watched that no. show, but I have. And I mean, there's a couple returning couples on there, but then there's a bunch of new people, and so I'm excited. Okay, so we've we've decided to cover it, and mm-hmm. as I understand it, it begins next week, like yeah. on the fourth on Monday. On Monday, I think. So that mean, means we have to change things a, around a little, a little bit. bit just to deal with the airtime. So we're probably going to move our schedule to Tuesdays if you're a patron, or Wednesdays yeah. if you're a regular old person. Yes. Yeah. So one day later for the sister wives or the seeking sister wives content, but VPR is going to stay the same. Yes. Throughout the rest of that season. Yes. And then we know there's two tell alls for 90 Day Fiance. Yeah, we do know that. Get off our dicks. I don't want to cover them, but you can't make me. (sighs) I feel like I have agency over my own body (laughs) and my life. I don't feel like I should be made. To watch the tell-alls, especially after I looked at the preview, but we'll talk about that in the 90-day fiancé segment. But Beatrice is insisting... Uh Uh-huh. We have to at least cover the end. We're not going to cover them as each individual episode. We're just going to cover them after they're already aired. Mm. We'll do a brief fucking recap of it, like 15 minutes tops. Can you handle that? (laughs) I will. I will for the raccoons raccoons. if that's what they really want. So we're just doing one... Brief. All encompassing tell all recap after it concludes. After both of them conclude. After both of them conclude. Okay, yeah. I can do that. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah, I you will can. shuffle my fat raccoon body in yeah. here and do you that. You will. Okay, God. <laughs> Is there anything else we need to talk I think about? That's in for housekeeping. Okay, well then let's get into our sister wives segment. Of course, we're doing sister wives rewinds. Mm. We are currently in season four, and I think this was episode six. But before we get into the episode, we actually have some Sister Wives hot goss that we needed to get into. One of the items is of a personal nature. And then we've got three of the items, which are like brown business, MLM, Mm. horseshit, that I just wanted to talk about and get your opinion on. Okay. Okay. The first thing we have to talk about, obviously, yeah, everybody probably knows this already, but of a Evidently, Mary and Amos, that grifter, <laughs> Clout that chaser. 100 divorced grifter, <laughs> that bankrupt grifter, ho ass, broke ass, that stink ass, <laughs> clout ass. That's right. I guess they broke up. Well, good. Okay. <laughs> like, Is that all you have to I say mean, about like, that? I kind of had a feeling. She yeah. kind of introduced him very quickly, like dating after two months. I love this guy. I'm like, really? 
It's been two months. Did she say she loved him? I don't remember that I don't specifically. Know she did. But she did have goo goo eyes. She kind of implied yeah, it though. Goo-goo. Yeah, she was totally into him. She's like, he's such a special person in my life. We're totally banging, probably. But I'm he like, had Ugh. so many red flags, yeah. not the least of which was that he kind of looked like Cody Brown. A little bit. Like his face symmetry lined up with Cody Brown. Plus, he had a lot of problems in his past. And apparently, what Mary is saying is that the reason they broke up isn't because of anything Amos did, mm-hmm. it isn't because of anything mary did it's because of us apparently it's because of the raccoons with the monocles sifting through the dumpster looking for trash on amos and it wasn't just raccoons and redditors it was also the tabloids and she's like it was too much why he couldn't take it oh he couldn't take it i don't think i don't think she said that i'm speaking for her spirit Mm. but she said yeah it was just too much and people don't really know what they're getting into when they sign up for a relationship with one of these women. I did watch part of her Fridays with Friends with Jen. Uh And she was talking a little bit about this. But it really sounded like she was blaming everybody else. Well, that's stupid. And it's totally typical of Mary. And I thought I saw something on Without a Crystal Ball that she was saying, Mary was saying that their values didn't align. Like her and Amos, Mm -hmm. they had different life paths or something like that okay i, I don't know if that's just mary's really that. cryptic bullshit yeah. it's probably just it's so hard to kind of decipher Ugh. what she's saying in her instagram post because it's so like inspo yeah therapy speak hashtag worthy up like what are you actually getting at though right i did think though that in her post she concluded it talking about other opportunities for her coming up like but other i mean dickies? yeah i think it was like the way i took it but i'm an eternal optimist and romantic the way that i took it was like she had other opportunities to get a deep dick in with somebody Ooh, else okay good yeah. maybe a lesbian for her oh, okay <laughs> keep advancing your agenda it's been on my vision board Either a man or a woman. Sure. On a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Okay, okay, God. I don't know how many times we have to hear this. I mean, in the last year and a half, we've almost been doing this pod for two years. I know. Isn't that crazy? Nuts. Absolutely wild. And we've heard this from you at least 200 times. Because that's what I want. I'm speaking speaking into the universe. I feel like she needs somebody on a Harley Davidson motorcycle, just like Janelle needs a big old cowboy. That's true. And we do want that for Mary. We want uh, that for them all. Yeah. But I don't know. I think she's going to be a little more reticent the next time she meets somebody before she hard launches him to the sister wives fandom because we are crazy i mean yeah but like wouldn't she have had to have this discussion with him when she started dating him like look i'm mary motherfucking brown Mm -hmm. i've been on tv for 20 years i'm a ex-polygamist people fucking love me i'm really famous you have to be okay with dating me like wouldn't you have to warn somebody i feel like christine did that with david woolley and he was like yeah i don't care I think that happened with Christine and David. And I do think that some of the articles that came out came out about Amos said that he knew who Mary was, that he was familiar with the show, which is one of the reasons that a lot of us kind of had a problem with him because he was we were sniffing the clout clout goblin. Yeah, clout goblin. Uh, So he knew who she was. But yeah, I mean, if you're going to have an authentic potential partner, you're going to have to give him the down low yeah on how we act out here and how some people for example without a crystal ball are just every single day two three four Insane. five times a day posting about this family and just talking to people in their past and trying to dig up any kind of trash that they can right like, which we obviously read yeah of course and consume <laughs> but like yeah there's a lot of people out here very invested in the browns i wonder if mary's just using this as an excuse though like there must have been something that happened between the two of them because if it's her just trying to blame it on all of us Mm -hmm. for just being curious raccoons just fucking investigating into their lives which we've been doing for 18 seasons right you know like it's not like it's anything new mary i wonder if it's just an excuse Probably. And if she was mentioning that their values were somehow not aligning, I'm wondering if that's because she got a sense that maybe he wasn't there for the right reason as well. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, we're just all speculating out here. I just want her to be happy. I want her to choose wisely. There's a dick on every corner, honey. You can find (laughs) one. Don't worry about it. Take your time. Facts. And take care of yourself. And then let, like, the universe bring him to you when you're ready. Or her, according to Beatrice. Yeah. Okay, now let's get into the shady business dealings of the Brown Wives. Okay. Starting with Christine. 
Yeah. So a lot of us have heard that Christine and David purchased an income property. It's a townhome in Moab, Utah. Mm -hmm. And she was sharing pictures of the townhome. They are turning it into an Airbnb, yep. which is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, real estate, it's a great way to invest your money. And I just love seeing Christine having a financial manifestation and dream that Robin could never. Oh, for real. Like work, bitch. And Cody could never. I mean, they could, but they don't because yeah. they spend all their money and it's in boxes in the basement of the McMansion. <laughs> in Dickensian village figurines. That's right. But we see just within the first year of marriage, David and Christine investing in a property so that they'll have those multiple streams of income, which I love. And so I'm happy for them and I'm happy for her. How evils. Yeah. She posted in the last week uh, something about how she was decorating the town home mm -hmm. and she showed like a little video of her making a collage something she's going to be hanging up in the airbnb and she's really proud of it and basically the collage is of the sister wives show mm -hmm. it's got cody it's got rob and it's got her it's got their kids and so she's going to be putting up art in effect which displays the sister wives connection and some people were like well go get your coins absolutely there's a reason people are going to want to book that B&B. Right. And that's because you're Christine Brown. Yeah. But then there's the other half of the audience that's like, God, you're constantly grifting. I I thought you hated him. Mm -hmm. I thought you couldn't wait to get away from all this. But now you just want to make collages and put them up in your Airbnb and profit. Right. Off of what you say you don't love and like anymore. So what do you think about it? Where do you fall with that? I mean, I'm of two minds. I More... I'm more on the side of like, fine, get your coins. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, you've been on the show for 18 seasons. Like that's great. And like everybody wants to go there because it's Christine motherfucking Brown's Airbnb. However, she's not going to be there like ever. I'm sure they got a property manager. I'm sure it's going to be like Lizzie's heritage Inn, where like Mary owns it, but she's not even there half the time. And so people will go there in the hopes that like, Oh, maybe, maybe I'll see Christine or maybe I'll see David like on the way out. No, you're not. No, you're not going to see anybody. You're just going to be hanging out in Moab, Utah, which is fine. Like whatever. I mean, I don't get the angry people who are like mad at her for grifting. I'm like, that's, she's been on the show though. For I mean, use the likeness and right. the image of the asshole who threw you away. You have every right to use it because yeah. you were a part of that story. And if that's going to garner you more bookings and more money, then I say absolutely yeah. do it. This is her life. This is her 30 years that she spent with Cody Brown and the rest of these women and in that family. So she should absolutely use it to her advantage if it is an advantage. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the only reason you and I would pack up all of our <laughs> raccoon shit plus snacks yeah. and go to Moab, Utah to her townhome is because I would I would want to smell the sister wives vibes totally i would like to bask in the energy <laughs> of the sister wives we should fucking do it by the way Maybe we should she's got her link up on her instagram i know i would love to go to utah i would love to too i heard it's beautiful yes so I've let's go do it once but i was i told you was yeah they don't sell alcohol though a lot of places there because it's a dry state yeah. so i mean I think they have bars and stuff like Vita Tequila, Do which they? Lisa, yes, Lisa Barlow on oh, Salt Lake City. Yeah, I yeah. think they have bars with alcohol, but yeah, I do think there's heavy restrictions on booze. You don't drink. No, I don't. It's but I'm talking problem. about for you. I'll be all right. <laughs> don't you worry about me. <laughs> well, tell us what you guys think. Yeah. Like, what do you think about Christine plastering the walls with sister wives memorabilia? Are you good with that? Or do are you, you have triggered? a problem with that? Like, why, why are you triggered if yeah. you're triggered? The other thing that Christine did last week or s around there, which I am kind of triggered about, oh. is she made a post talking about menopausal symptoms. I guess she's going through peri or actual menopause and she's dealing with those hot flashes, honey, mm. and it's uncomfortable, yada, yada, yada. But then she used that opportunity to direct people to another Instagram account, which was all for plexus mm. and so she didn't come out right and say like if you're experiencing menopausal symptoms then you should be taking plexus because it will heal you like she didn't say it that overtly but it just kind of smacked of some of the stuff that McCul McKelty has been doing McCulty. over the past <laughs> McCulty that's perfect <laughs> oh my god McCulty <laughs> has been doing over the last year or so if you recall mm -hmm. after she gave birth she went up live I think it was on Patreon and she said said that 
women who experience, and I'm paraphrasing, but this is pretty, pretty accurate. Women who experience postpartum depression are really just missing being the center of attention. Mm. Yeah. I didn't know she said that. Yeah. Are you serious? It's because they aren't the center of attention anymore. And she also used her platform to say that you should dry out your placenta and eat your placenta, which I know a lot of crunchy women. You'll probably do that. I mean, I might. You are probably going to be eating your, you're going to probably make us all eat your. It's supposed to be really good for you. Okay, McKelty. All the stem cells and stuff. Which is fine. Like, I don't mind. Like, I know there's some people who have fringe ideas like that, but her PPD stuff and also her weight loss stuff because yeah. she has lost so much weight uh-huh. and she's not coming right out and saying how she did it except to say it's plexus. Yeah. But I'm like, are we doing Ozempic? I... Like, can we just say if you're doing Ozempic and also if you are doing Ozempic or one of those drugs, you have a responsibility to say that you're doing other things and not just plexus although maybe she said that maybe she's attributed her weight loss to other things i really haven't heard about that Mm -hmm. but mckelty's shady and now here's christine with her menopause miracle potion plexus and i'm like ew right like let's stop trying to sell this weird fucking flute fruity drink that you guys are so obsessed with it's kind of ridiculous like janelle kind of did this for a little while too Mm -hmm. with plexus being like she didn't outwardly say, like, you can lose weight with it. But she's like, yeah, I've lost a few pounds drinking Plexus. And it's, like, really good for gut health and all this stuff. And I'm like, shut up. It's not. It's not. Like, you're just saying it it's is. It's an MLM. It's an MLM. Like, stop ripping people off. But, like, that's just what the Browns are doing. I mean, they have all this shit. And then they have the mm-hmm. mentorships. I know we're going to get to that. Get it. We're about to get there, honey. Girl, I'm just, I can't. But the mentorships or the life coaching is also connected to an MLM, which I just stop. learned. Yeah, I just learned that, too. But, yeah. Yeah, I just feel like when it comes to people's mental health, when it comes to their actual physical health, you've got to obviously be very careful about what kind of claims that you make, which I think that they know. So they kind of ride the lightning around what they actually say. But it's just distasteful to me. It is. It's distasteful to act like you are dispensing some kind of health information when what you're really doing is just trying to build up your downline and make money off of people. Oh, yeah. And that's becoming a trend right now on the social medias. Like, it's not just in these, like, health drinks, MLMs and stuff. It's in the whole fitness industry with, like, fucking protein powders and pre-workout mm. and take all this, all these supplements that you may or may not be good for you. All this bullshit that people just tout. Like, did you ever watch mm-hmm. the Dr. Phil episode where he called out this, like, health influencer for oh my like, gosh, the juice? Yes. Yeah, that was Jilly Juice yes, or something like Jilly that. Yes, juice. I was actually in her Facebook group and I went in there and I watched some of the videos of that lady and I saw what they were talking about. I'm like, y'all are crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I remember that Dr. Phil. <laughs> Me too. I was watching that and Dr. Phil is just calling her out and being like, this is bullshit like mm-hmm. you're literally scamming people and like har- wasn't it harmful to people too yes yes like I actually mean, allegedly, causing problems allegedly yeah purportedly caused issues like See, people, somebody died or somebody got really sick or went to the hospital yeah and that's the danger about claiming that all of these stupid products that you're shilling out for people are good for them mm-hmm. and healthy it's dumb It's just money grubbing. Yes. I mean, I don't have a problem if you want to invest in an income property and have an Airbnb. That sounds great. That's legit. But when you're in an MLM and there's health, like health implications, then I'm like, you're so shady. Yeah. I really want to root for Christine and root for Janelle and root for Mary. But this is the kind of shit I cannot stand. I know. I wish they didn't do that kind of stuff. Me too. Last but not least. Now, a few weeks ago... We talked to y'all about Mary's new website, worthyup.com. Hashtag worthyup. Worthyup.com. And we learned that Mary is entering into the mentorship field. It kind of feels like life coaching, Mm -hmm. some kind of mentorship. Like if your life is falling apart, then you too can spend $145 to be mentored by Mary Brown, who languished in a 33-year marriage and from which she walked away with pretty much nothing that she deserved Mm -hmm. but like now she's gonna purport to be your mentor so that stinks yeah and i did read some stuff on 
one of the subreddits, the Sister Wives subreddit, which says that Mary's friends with this woman in Utah, and I don't recall her name at the top of my head, raccoons definitely put it in the comments, um, but she's got an MLM life coaching type of business. Stop. And it feels like Mary is maybe trying to start a new MLM with this woman, and that's what Worthy Up might be, allegedly, we don't know. But then there's Janelle. <laughs> a couple of months ago, we also talked about Strive by Janelle, yeah. which was Janelle's inactive website, which I think was started in 2016, which had some um, copy in the website that sounded like she too was going to do life coaching shit, mm -hmm. but it was not developed and it didn't look like it had gone anywhere. Well, guess what? Year of Our Lord 2024, Strive with Janelle is live. Yes, but it's really cringe because some of the descriptions are like Honey. totally copy pasted. Like yeah. one of them, she says she's a mother of two. I know. <laughs> and everybody's like, what are you talking about mother of two? Like people think she meant grandmother of two or something like that. I don't fucking she's know. She's got three. I think they're reaching for straws to try and yeah. give Jan Janelle the benefit of the doubt. But I'm like, you can't even proofread your fucking website right. before you make it live. And then you're going to charge people $75, right? Or something for like it a 30 minute. $75 for a 45 minute consult. So <laughs> that's not your actual like weekly fee that you would have to pay in order to sit down on a Zoom call with Janelle and get awesome life advice. That's your consult, I assume, to just try and workshop whether you'd be a good client for her or not. Oh my a God. A lot of times those consults are free because yeah. like you don't know if you're going to mesh with a client and so you get on a Zoom, you introduce yourselves and you figure out whether you want to do this work together. But like she's charging for that consult and I did grab some of her copy Good. and I wanted to read it. Kay. So this is what Janelle is saying. She's like, hi, I'm Janelle, redefine plus life coach. I'm an inspiring TV personality and life coach. I make it my mission to help you pursue growth in all aspects of your life. I am always seeking new approaches to help others realize their potential. What are these approaches? Are like, they <laughs> scientific approaches? Are they psychological approaches? Is there any research? Is there a paper you can direct us to? Uh, let me go on. I love teaching others the thrill of taking on life's adventures and the challenge of living life on their own terms. I have an insatiable hunger for knowledge and experiences, and I want you to experience that feeling. I never stop striving for your success and helping you embrace the unknown. You are a passionate, dynamic individual, and I want you to dream big and refuse to let anything get in your way. That sounds great. Hashtag worthy up. Kind of. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Isn't it's it very weird generic? that Janelle and Mary are adversaries kind of like they do not get along no they don't but they're both starting like a very similar business i wonder why and like we talked about with mary's whole life coaching thing like i'm sure this comes from an okay place within them like maybe they genuinely want to help people maybe they think they can genuinely help people but it just feels like a grift like what kind of life advice are you going to give mm -hmm. me Janelle mm -hmm. when you too were married to a guy for 30 years entangled your finances so badly that you're still trying to probably untangle uh -huh. them right now yeah, you're gonna need a lawyer you're Just gonna FYI. need a lawyer and you fucked your life up like low-key and like now you want to give people advice on how to take life by the horns and well i'm really glad you asked how she's going to help you because did you know that she has personalized plans what that are tailored to your needs, Beatrice. Oh, really? By the way, you have a lot of needs. You I need do. help. I That's do. your primary need is you need help. <clears throat> she says, my coaching is all about you, your goals, your challenges, and your needs. I offer personalized plans that are tailored to your lifestyle and preferences. By the way, personalized plans indicates tiers of financial commitment. Yeah, and right. So the first entry level, like maybe we can get in a group Zoom call and you can just listen, but make sure you stay on mute. <laughs> the next one up, you're paying twice as much. And right. Maybe you're meeting with a representative or it's a smaller group. Like there are going to be tears to your connection with Janelle. Wow. So you can achieve your fitness goals. 
in a sustainable and enjoyable way. Fitness goals? Yeah, it was. it's kind of from left field because she's talking about your goals, your challenges, your needs, having an insatiable hunger for knowledge. But then she says, so you can achieve your fitness goals in a sustainable, enjoyable way. Whether you prefer working out at home or at the gym, I will work with you to create a plan that fits your schedule and preferences. So when did you become a personal trainer, Janelle? Like, what are your qualifications for any of this? How can you give people workout plans if you're not certified in that? Like, don't you have to be certified or as a personal nutrition trainer? nutrition plans? Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to be certified. I don't think it's that difficult to get certified. No, and I think it's actually possible that she may have gotten her certification, but she's not referencing it yet on her website. But we have to acknowledge that, and again, Janelle's chief passion in life for the last 10 years has been fitness has been opening her gym yeah she's been talking a lot about it and it does seem that she's lost quite a bit of weight in the last year or so I mean is that Olympic I don't know it kind of feels like it but I'm just like I don't know this is the whole uh, this is what I was talking about earlier with like the fitness industry there's so many of these grifters nowadays mm-hmm. that I'm like th- I swear to god the second people start working out and going to the gym people think that they can be personal fucking trainers and start making money off of it because right. it is easy like there's a lot of people that sign up through apps and stuff and they're like oh if you pay $15 a month then I'll give you your personal workout plan and it's like that's great and all but why can't we just make this stuff accessible for people as opposed to making them pay? It already is accessible. These people are aggregators of information you can find on Google. And Facts. when they say it's a personalized plan, it is a template yeah. that they give to a variety <laughs> of people based on their BMI, BMI or whatever their lifestyle right. is. Like, yeah. come on, we all know the grift. Right. And it's a grift. It is a grift. So that's interesting to me because Mary is doing her worthy up from more of like a general self-development mm-hmm. uh, motivation kind of a place whereas Janelle does seem to be getting a little more niche with it or specific to having it center around fitness Mm -hmm. and she's got her plexus MLM which is again she's doing the same thing Christine is doing so that's her health background right okay I just can't like I I love these ladies and I think they're great people but I'm just like why do you do I don't think they're great people well I think why do we think they're great people they got good hearts and stuff why why do we even think that uh, because I'm a nice person okay but I mean I'm just saying like I don't think they're like horrible they're not as bad as fucking Cody and Robin but I'm just like why are you doing business stuff like this where you're ripping people off listen Beatrice they've been ripping us off since season one season one Cody melted down Mary's ring and she didn't mention hide nor hair of that shit yeah Christine Janelle and Mary have been lying to us from the very beginning pretending that they're a happy polygamous family meanwhile nobody's getting fucked nobody's <laughs> seeing Cody children are being neglected it's all yeah. lies and You're so right. I mean when we say they're good people I mean I guess comparatively speaking when you compare them to the monster <laughs> that is Cody Brown then they're better people but yeah. like mm, yeah and like how good can you really be if you're doing mlms and shit like this yeah i have a real moral problem with that and like we may have some listeners who are part of that situation and i'm not i'm really not going to judge you and i've known so many people who have done things like this and i get it i understand why they would and sometimes they really believe in the product but like the whole thing to me in my opinion is so predatory and it takes advantage of in specific women Mm -hmm. usually women who are struggling financially or are in relationships or are not in relationships single moms who are just trying to be able to take care of their family and are willing to take these risks because you're mary fucking brown yeah and you're selling this lula row and it must be awesome so let me get in on that yeah one two years later you have an entire basement full of inventory that you can't fucking sell so it's sad it's all sad and so we just wanted to share that sadness with you (laughs) you're welcome yeah like what do you think though i mean are we being too harsh i do want janelle to have a future me too i want these women to be able to make a way for themselves and and be happy but like is this is this what we're doing out here i know i'm like i feel like there's better ways to do it i feel like you could capitalize a lot off of the sister wives universe and if you write fucking books and tell us all the secrets and shit indeed and tell us how you felt about everything that would be the tits like everybody would be so happy your million dollar money maker idea you could write like five books in a fucking series or some shit I'm serious. Like you could write about Mormonism. You could write about your family. Sister Wives season one through three behind the scenes. 
and then real. just take us all to season 20 honey and i would be buying so that we would money. be talking about it we would be having zoom group meetings yep. with all the <laughs> raccoons <laughs> with our monocles i would yeah. be so into it but like and it's also straightforward, upfront, and it's truthful. Right. But that right. is something that seems to be anathema to these people. Do you know what that means? No. That's oh, a good word. Gosh. Yeah, it's another good word. you got a big brain. I'm saying. Yeah. But it's something that is just completely counter to who they are, uh, apparently. Good word. Okay, now let's get into Sister Wives. We're doing a rewind recap. We're just taking a snapshot of their lives back in 2012, and we're trying to kind of connect what we're seeing back then to what has happened in the last couple of years. Yeah. We're in season four, which I believe is taking place in 2012. Uh, episode six. This one's entitled Four Wives for Valentines. Cringe. And in this episode, we kind of have a continued conversation with Mary and Cody about her infertility journey. Mm -hmm. We also talk about Valentine's Day. There's a Valentine's party for the Browns. And there's also a Valentine's daddy-daughter dance mm -hmm. that Logan goes to because yeah. he's been parentified his entire life. He's the real dad. <laughs> and then the meat of the matter is the meeting with the mortgage lender. Yeah, at the end. I loved. I mean, me too. Let's count some coins. Girl. I want to know about coins. Although it's kind of a producer fake out because they end up getting approved and shit. I know, but I don't know how they do it. I don't know either. This is what this is what the mystery is. Yeah. Like, and y'all tell me, do they ever illuminate us as to how these people are going to be able to get 40% down? We talked about this last week. We're talking 720,000 doll hairs. How are these poor people <laughs> going to come up with cash money liquidity $720,000 but it is an interest only loan I told you now yeah you did you it were right about interest that only loan okay but Ooh. we'll get there that was yeah. towards the end of the episode we start this episode with Mary and Cody going to a second specialist mm -hmm. to talk about how they might be able to conceive and in this conversation this specialist tells Mary you're old. <laughs> Your eggs are dried up, bitch. And what happens when you're old is you don't have a lot of eggs and the eggs that you have, they ain't no good. And Mary's like, oh, I didn't know that. Well, then if it's not my egg and Cody's sperm, then I don't think we want to do it. Right. We yeah. Answered the question that I had for you last week. Yep. Like, so if Robin's going to be a surrogate, does that mean Robin's going to use her own egg? Because we know Mary's a little older. Mm -hmm. But no, that's a no. Yeah. It's got to be Mary's egg and it's got to be Cody's jizz. And how old is Mary? I thought she was like 41. in her late 30s. She's oh, 41. she's 41. That's yeah, why. Okay. The doctor mentioned it. That makes a lot of sense. I forgot. I thought she was like 35 or something No, like she's that. 41 at this point. And so I think a geriatric pregnancy is like from 35 on yeah she better hop on technically it, honey. where's you. my grandkids listen it's Haven't not that I easy done enough in this life jesus christ i'm getting tired am i gonna have any grandkids before i die <laughs> eventually okay. your daughter don't got no dick so <laughs> i mean it is harder for a couple of little it is a little to harder. conceive but there's ways to do it i gotta find some jizz you gotta anybody know one. anybody know anybody? would you like to donate jizz to the, um, <laughs> to the reality records. tv cringe podcast DM so us on instagram <laughs> she could be a mom and i could be a grandma a glamma yeah yeah oh my uh, god that's my dream i know anyway it's not mary's dream <laughs> she's 41 years old and this is bad biological news that she's yeah. got like decrepit eggs and stuff. Yeah. But furthermore, she's like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to start over. I mean, I've got Leon. Yeah. Leon's 16 or whatever, Ugh. 17 years old. And Leon is a terror. Yeah. And I don't know if I want to bring another child into this marriage if you after you melted down my ring. I know, for real. And after you don't fuck me all the time. Somebody left a comment last episode, yeah. which was like a deep thought that I had that I didn't bring up on the pod. Because okay. we were talking about like... Why? That's your job. Well, I, I don't know. I thought it would be we too offensive. We want your hot takes. Oh, I please. thought it'd be too offensive. Too offensive? But somebody commented and I was like, okay, I feel less offensive now. They were saying... um how could Mary and Cody not get pregnant? Like it was always my feeling that they were just probably not having sex or something. And that's why they couldn't get pregnant. Like Mary saying, Oh yeah, the frequency is not an option or not a, a, problem. a problem. Like we have sex a lot, but somebody was like, well, maybe he's not coming in her. And that's what I was thinking too. I was like, what if he's not though? Because if let's just say hypothetically, if he hasn't, if Cody hasn't been fucking Mary, for the last like 10 years or something like right. this at this point. And like he melted down her ring in season one. 
Has he been coming in? I mean, I'm sorry. I know that's so, so we offensive. Think, no, we think Cody's pulling out because he doesn't want to procreate with Mary. Is that what, like the theory is? Or is it just like he I don't can't know. come because he's not hard because he's not know. attracted? Like what's the theory that we're working with here? I don't know. Maybe he's pulling out. Maybe he's not coming because he's not into her. I don't fucking mm. know. That's mm. such a fucked up theory because obviously Mary has these fertility issues. I don't want to like invalidate that or, you know... Right, but we also have to acknowledge uh, that we're all very sick in this community. Yeah. So like, we, we consider all aspects and things. Like, I hadn't even thought about that. I know. Somebody commented. I was like, oh, they're on my well level. <laughs> they're on my depraved, I degenerate know. wavelength. Awesome. <laughs> I honestly think that it is frequency of sex because mm-hmm. in that same appointment, I guess last time with Mary and Cody, she's like, oh, it's not a problem. But Cody, I think, said on the couch something like, well, we have to have sex at least once a month. Yeah. As if... They're not. Yeah. And I'm like, when are you guys having sex? Because, you know, there's certain times during a woman's menstrual cycle where you get sure. your most fertile yes. and sometimes where you're not as fertile. Not me. I come from a really fertile family. Yes. So. Well, allegedly, I, I ain't do. got no dick here. <laughs> I, I ain't got no dick. <laughs> I know. We need to get a dick up in here. We need to get some spermies. Holy cow. Um, yeah. So that was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know that Mary and Cody go on to decide not to try surrogacy and or I IVF, it's for the but, best. Yeah, we're kind of in the middle of the conversation, but there's so much subtext of like what they are not saying that we like to talk about. Yeah. Okay, next, I thought it was such an cute and interesting little scene with Gwendolyn oh my God. and Christine. They're getting ready for the daddy daughter dance. Of course, Gwendolyn didn't ask Cody, her own father, because he sucks, to be her date. She asked Logan. And so Christine is doing their hair and she's asking Gwendolyn, like, why did you ask Logan? I don't remember why she asked him. Oh, she's like, oh, well, she says, I don't like to share. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And I'm never going to be a polygamist. Therefore, <laughs> that's right, yes. bitch ass mom, <laughs> bitch ass ho ass mom. <laughs> and she's like nine or something. Here. Why am I going to the dance with my dad and 70,000 <laughs> other kids when I could just ask Logan and he'd be all mine? I don't like to share. So fucking cute. And Logan's like, Logan's taking it like a champ, like mm-hmm. a 17 year old boy. I feel like a lot of older brothers tend to like pick on their sisters and stuff. I don't know. Yes. You had an older brother, right? You guys yes. used to tussle all the time. Yes. Yes. So I feel like it was really cute that Logan was like, I'm honored that she picked me. And so I'm happily going. I'm going to get all dressed up for it. I'm like, I love you, Logan. I love Logan too. Such a sweetheart. He's like the older brother. I think we all wish we had. Yeah. Um, before they go to the dance, Mary comes over because she wants to see the girls. And did you see Savannah? Yes. Oh, oh my, my God. Gosh, Savannah is so, so cute. cute. My non-existent <sighs> ovaries were just throbbing. I like know. If I could just have a little baby, a little Savannah. She was so adorable. She's dressed in her little blue dress. And Mary's coming over to see the girls. And Mary says, um, off camera, I think on the couch, she says something like, you know, I just feel like I'm one of their dad's wives. Mm. And I feel like I'm a guest coming over to see what's happening for the dance. And like, this is the reason we really need to figure out what's happening with the cul-de-sac or our living situation, because it's not just me feeling like I'm an outsider. All of the siblings also don't necessarily feel like their brothers and sisters are siblings. They feel like friends. Yeah. And which I was thinking about while watching this episode, I'm like, man, this was the worst thing they could have done for the family. And if it wasn't for the show, like forcing these moments to happen where the family got together, I feel like they wouldn't be getting together very often at all. Because Mm -hmm. we know from season 18, like the Friday night dinner stopped that they used to have as a family. And like Mm -hmm. Cody was spending a lot of his time at Robin's house by this point already in season four. So it's just like, I wish they wouldn't have done this. Like, I know they were moving out of Utah because of the investigation. Right. I get it, whatever. But like, why didn't you have a plan? Why didn't you like try to find places that were closer? Why'd you have to get these huge fucking houses that are all far away from each other? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. They could have done everything so much better. Yes. But they didn't. And they didn't prioritize like the family time. And so now no. the family's struggling and suffering for it. It's just a shame. And it's like the chain of communication, like when they let the kids in on what the new plan is. And to me, it feels so traumatic because like they're telling all the kids during this episode and like a couple of them previous when they're going out to the cul-de-sac, they're like, this is what we're manifesting. This is where we want to move. This is we want to have houses right next to each other. So they're giving their children these expectations of a family life that's going to look a certain way and getting them all hyped up and excited Mm -hmm. And then they're having another family meeting at the end of this where they're like, yeah, sorry about that, because it's not going to work out. 
Uh, so unfortunately, one of these houses is already sold, et cetera, et cetera. And you have Leon saying, yeah, I don't get my hopes up. Yeah. Our parents tell us shit all the time and it doesn't happen. And then Logan mm. just co-signs on the couch. He's like, yeah, like whatever. Like, I don't care. Yeah. And Cody keeps saying like, we have to be in these houses before Logan graduates. But I'm like, you're not prioritizing that because you guys can't get your fucking finances in order. You're leasing this stupid rose gold Nissan from your mm -hmm. L MLM and caring more about Robin's pussy than anything else. Right. Like, it's just a shame. And as a kid, like that's just so disappointing to like not be able to trust when your parents say like, Hey, we're going to do this because if they can't follow right. through and like, obviously shit happens, like parents aren't perfect. And so sometimes promises get but broken. But it's a pattern of behavior. Exactly. With the Browns. Right. And that's the problem. And the kids picked up on that pattern and now they're like, uh, whatever. Oh my God. By the time we're getting to Flagstaff, <laughs> these older kids are like, fuck all y'all. Right. Like, Bye. absolutely not. I'm staying in Las Vegas. You guys have fun over there, but we won't be coming up the whole lot. So you're making this choice to leave us because mm -hmm. we're not coming with you. And like, just go do you OGs for real moms and dad. Oh, so selfish. They don't care about anything but themselves. Yeah. So that was really sad. I felt for Mary because I really do think that despite Mary's problematic, angry behavior in the beginning of the relationships and throughout, I really feel like she does have a heart for the kids. Me too. And she loves being around the kids. And we know she ends up loving to be around Ariella and Solomon. Um, but she's just continues to be pushed out I and know. pushed out and you just can see it in these early seasons it's really sad it's really sad and that probably contributes to her anger problems like i'm just gonna say oh. i'm not excusing 100%. it percent. but it's like that i would be fucking angry too if mm. my ring gets melted down i can't have more than one fucking child my husband's mm. favoriting a wife and none of the other wives or kids like me and like he's not fucking me seriously not making me feel good downstairs like i just feel bad I, for her i feel bad for her too after this, um, we go to the dance, yeah. which is kind of a nothing burger. But I did notice that Cody has a type of dance that he <laughs> typically does, which is that whirling dervish dancing that he did at his friend's wedding in Oklahoma two seasons ago. Just an absolute narcissistic fucking fool just spinning around the floor. Like he was no doing rhythm. a little bit of that yeah. at the little girl's dance because he just can't not be the center of attention 100 percent, which is so weird because he's a capricorn i'm like but he's a narc so what's his rising i don't know what his rising what's his is moon? i don't yeah. know okay we yeah. need to figure that yeah, out his <laughs> rising is gonna give us a lot of information i bet it's, it's gotta be a leo <laughs> yeah. it's gotta be something crazy like that i'm sorry you're a leo i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so they're dancing and logan is dancing and it's really sweet and all the little girls have a great time it's very wholesome and i think in the next episode we have uh cody taking the boys out on their own adventures so he's mm. trying to convince us that he's a good dad yeah and he's giving specific attention to his various and sundry okay. children but i don't believe it nope and then cody goes to a florist the next day because again it's valentine's and he's picking out bouquets for his many wives and he sees the bouquet on the table and he's like yeah that's good for janelle and he sees another one a little different. He's like, yeah, that's good for Mary. But let's talk about Robin's bouquet. Yeah. I know she loves this and the blah, blah, and the color and the blah, blah, blah. And I want it to be, I want all of that for Robin. Mm -hmm. And then Christine, like she likes purple. Yeah. And fire and ice. Whatever <laughs> that means. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's a type of rose. Oh, is it? I think it's a type of rose. <laughs> I'm dumb. I didn't know that. I was actually surprised that he had input on anything for Christine. Because I know. we know that he hates her. But like, he was just really black and white like it was a big contrast to me like how much he didn't give a shit about mary and janelle and mm -hmm. it was just like into the creative process of building a bouquet for robin i know because he actually cares about robin i think he was only paying attention to some of the details for christine just because he knows that she's reactive and she's right. hella jealous right. so he's scared yes yeah. so, so he's like i gotta make sure i remember this one detail designing this bouquet right but yes. when he when it was robin like he was really interested in getting her something that she would really love and you could tell yeah because he loves her meanwhile across town we've got the four wives excuse me and my wig jesus Mary i know my wig is bothering me today too should, I, can i pin it or something <laughs> yeah i don't know how to do wigs <laughs> well you gotta get a hairnet i don't want a hairnet i want to pin it and hairnet it just keeps falling because anyway, you're a big head what huh Okay, so back at Mary's house, we have all of the OG wives getting together because they've got a workshop what they're going to be doing for Valentine's because Valentine's is an awkward holiday for polygamists. Yeah, no shit. Because it's a monogamous holiday. Yeah. And so it makes them feel bad. So we're going to have a family 
party and we're going to do something special for Cody. Yeah, special, a.k.a. they're just going to decorate his rented. They're going to have their kids. Yeah, the kids decorate, decorate the rented <laughs> Nissan, the least Nissan right? that he has, yeah. which is pretty cringy. But it's like kind of sweet, I guess. Like they're going to put balloons and. But you're all going to clean it up too, yeah. right? Because I'm not going to have to clean that up, right? <laughs> Washable paint on the right. windows only. <laughs> right. So this was like whatever. Yeah. What I thought was kind of interesting in this particular scene is they start constructing a plan how are they going to get Cody's car so he doesn't know that they're going to decorate it and Robin's like well I can go over and I can say I've got a flat tire and I can do all this all of these machinations and then Janelle's like are you was it Janelle like are you okay to lie are you going to be able to lie and she's like oh I can lie absolutely lie and then she catches herself and she's like I'm joking (laughs) She's like, oh, yes. I can lie. Don't you worry about it. I got this. I caught that too. That yes. was wild. I wondered if you caught that. I did. I'm like, oh, girl, you're spilling yep. that. She is. Even in the way that Robin offered to be the one to tell Cody, I thought was kind of interesting because she knew that if any of the other wives were telling Cody like, hey, I need to borrow your car. He probably would have been like, fuck no. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. But because Robin with her diesel jeans and oh her God. puppy dog eyes, she's like, Cody, my car has a flat. Can I borrow your car? And he's like, sure. Yeah. As long as it's quick. And then he's like, maybe I'll get my air compressor. So like they they, they concoct this plan to get the car away from Cody. Yeah. Robin barges into Christine's house because I just felt like she wanted to. Oh, yeah. Like, I'd love to be the one to come on into your house while you're spending time with your husband and steal him away. Thank you. Thank you very much. So she gets his car. She takes it down to Mary's. All of the kids decorate it. They fill it with balloons. It is, in theory, a wonderful gesture, but they're just making television people. Oh, for sure. These adults hate each other. Yeah. Then they drive back to Christine's house where Cody still is, and Robin goes in and pretends that she got into an accident or, like, scratched his beautiful rose gold convertible <laughs> Nissan from the MLM. <laughs> and we can't have that it's my very beautiful card let's everybody know i'm rich (laughs) yeah and so he's worried and he comes out of the house and then he rounds the corner and surprise happy valentine's day we love you and then he's like oh robin i'm gonna get you for that later in your pants yeah Yeah, in your pants i'm gonna give you something honey oh yeah all four inches Mm -hmm. of this manhood up inside of you baby 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 number two you want to suck on these balls lord jesus but and this is another thing though like if any of the other wives came up to him and they're like oh i accidentally wrecked your car oh my god he would have flipped the fuck out yeah he would have been mad and we'd have been able to see that on his face yeah i did feel as he was looking at the car like he was just like who's gonna clean this shit this is my very fancy special car so people know i'm a very fancy (laughs) special person now now what (laughs) right so thanks for giving me a job for valentine's day yeah i really appreciate it from there, we go to the Valentine's party. Mm-hmm. Wait, is that when we went to the... Yeah, we go yeah. to the Valentine's party. He gives his bouquets out as if he doesn't give a shit. No, he's, he's literally like, like, here. This one's yours. This one's yours. This one's yours. And Robin? Robin, I got this for you. I Let me give you a all kiss. of these flowers because each flower has a meaning. <laughs> and it's a message from me to you, from my heart to your heart <laughs> and into your pants. Here's your special bouquet. Yeah. And then he gave some presents to the kids. Mm-hmm. They all had cards and it seemed like a fine... Brown family party. Yeah. Although Mary picked up on the fact that he just handed her the flowers. Oh, you're right. And she's yeah. like, that felt like an obligation. Mm-hmm. And Cody's like on the couch, just like, shut the fuck up, Mary. Like, he's like not happy <laughs> it about it. It is an it. obligation. We have an image to maintain on season right, four. Right. Like, pretend that we're happy. And I felt bad for her that she's already like calling that out in season fucking four after her ring's been melted. And she's just like, you don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mary, because he doesn't. Nope. And you are an outsider. Yep. You are a guest in these houses. Sorry. Got to tell you, though. Yep. All right. Finally, last but not least, after all of this, we have the wives and Cody going to meet that mortgage lender with that terrible highlighted skunk stripe. Remember when we did that back Mm -hmm. in the aughts and stuff? Thanks, Stacey London. (laughs) Yeah. Well, (laughs) Stacey London had actual gray hair. I know. And it looked cool. But this is like a a bleached piece, an untoned piece stripe of hair right in the front of her face i did it too i, I can't did you complain really? i did but it wasn't th- it wasn't Stop. that thick but it's just like super totally tacky do you have pictures mm, i might oh my god be i need able to, to share those with you in any event <laughs> um so they go to the the lady i forget her name they're sitting down at the table and she's like i've got good news for you guys we were able to secure you some lending now it's non-conventional 
because you can't just go into a Wells Fargo, honey, or a U.S. No. bank and get a mortgage. Sorry about it. Yeah. But here's the catch. <laughs> It's interest only, which means you're going to have to pay the interest and you're going to be able to do that for a period of time. And again, that's usually five to 10 years. And then you're going to have to pay that shit off. Big yikes. But wait, there's more. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, because we're talking about four homes that are priced at approximately $450,000 hairs each, um, you're going to have to pay 40% of that, which is about $720,000. And little Robin in the corner immediately starts to tear up because she believes God is going to provide the cultus. I believe in our dream and she's taking my dream away from me. We have Janelle immediately say, yeah, this isn't going to work. No, absolutely not. She's like, that's ridiculous. That's a crazy right. amount of money. And yeah. even Cody, I mean, recognizes that too. He's Cody like, immediately what the starts fuck? to back out. Yeah. He's like, okay, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need to get these how these houses anymore. And Robin says like, I bought into this dream. Right. And I'm like, but what have you contributed to the dream though? Mm -hmm. Like nothing. Sexual mm. seduction. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sexual services. Not for Janelle, who's funding no, a lot of this. But I'm keeping your man happy, Janelle. You're welcome. Oh, oh Jesus. Yeah, so she's um, upset. I don't remember what Christine was, but it did seem like Cody immediately wanted to back out. And, and rightly so. Like, again, you've got to have $720,000 liquid to be able to put down in order to do this. And yeah. plus you're going to have to owe on all of these homes in fucking five years or 10 years. And so Janelle knows what that means. Cody just hears 720 and the dream is, is dying and it's gone. So I'm very curious, Beatrice, how they get from this untenable position yeah into the four homes oh because in addition somebody has already purchased one of those homes yeah which i was surprised about because i didn't remember that from watching this season previously mm. so i'm like how the fuck are they going to get these homes well that deal obviously falls through oh okay it becomes available again and um, somehow they're going to cobble together the money that's wild maybe right? they take out a loan People will do that. Like maybe they'll take out like a fucking a seven hundred and twenty thousand dollar loan girl. for a loan. I don't know. If <laughs> I don't know, like you're gonna have to borrow that from like family or something. If these Mormons are experts in MLMs, bankruptcies, yeah. funneling their money through all these LLCs and shit, I'm sure they can find a fucking way. I want to know, and obviously, Me too. we're gonna get into the houses. I don't know. Maybe you guys, you've, you've listened or watched this show. Like maybe you guys know how they actually do this financial and i hope it's revealed i'm not confident that it will be yeah but i want to know me too because they get into these houses and then the final scene from this episode you know all of the adults gather the kids together uh, i think in janelle's home who cares mm -hmm. to break the bad news well the good news is well we got the we got a loan after a fashion but the bad news is one of the homes sold and like we can't afford any of it because we're <laughs> broke like why even tell them oh you got a loan like yeah like, it's, it's not gonna happen and they don't care their kids too leon's like they like, don't need to know that leon's like duh like, yeah i didn't even get my hopes up and mm -mm. the older kids just have no confidence whatsoever in their parents why should they they should not i mean obvious like since they told them oh yeah we're moving in two days to las vegas right oh yeah we have to live in four separate homes like they've been getting their hopes up and fucking demolish this whole entire time from their parents. And so why even care? There's like a way to do it. Like that is between we're moving in two days and hey guys, we're going to get this awesome cul-de-sac behind a gated community. It's so great. Pray to, pray to the Lord about it. Right. And there's like a happy medium where like you don't have to give them all of the information. You only tell them the things when, when it's solidly in place or in motion. Yeah. But these people are just, I, I don't know. They, I, I don't get it. They suck. They suck as parents. They suck really they suck bad. Economically. Yeah. They suck in partnerships, in their own relationships. They're just bad. It's horrible. And I wonder how much money Cody's making from this MLM that he's in if he's leasing this car. Mm -hmm. Because he gets rid of it eventually, which right. means that he's not making a lot of money. Right. But I just wonder if he's bringing anything in or if he's just using that for him and Robin or giving it to Robin. 
you ever wonder about that? Like, I wonder if he like gets money, makes money on the side or whatever, and just kind of funnels it to Robin. I wonder if all of the women put their money from TLC into the family LLC, but anything that Cody makes that's as a result of his job, whether that's TLC or live or whatever fucking MLM he's shilling, like whether that goes into his own pockets, like his own piece of property that has the pond. I want something for myself. And then he can take the money that he has and, and it. do whatever he wants. And buy a beautiful bouquet for Robin Ooh. and a Dickensian version <laughs> and all that artwork yes ooh lordy mini bikes and everything yep yeah.